Hello everyone, if you're joining, if you're just joining us, welcome. If you were watching the last video, sorry we had a slight problem with our internet connections, but hopefully this one will be good, <laughs> this will be good. I'll start again from the beginning for everyone joining us or everyone watching afresh. So hello and welcome to Hamwell Zoo. My name is Bo and welcome to our third series of lockdown videos. All of the other videos which are still available on our Facebook page. They all have elements of the National Curriculum for Key Stage 1 and 2 within them. In this series, we're really going to concentrate on the specifics of the Key Stage, the elements of Key Stage 1 and 2 science, but where we can cover with our wonderful animals. Today, we're going to be looking at differences and similarities between animals. So the first thing is it's important to note that all life on Earth are, um, is related, and we could group them all together in something called a taxonomic grouping. And the best way to represent it is a large tree, a little bit like a family tree. And we all the leaves on those tree, on that tree, um, there's nine million. All nine million leaves represent a very specific species of animal. So all different types of birds and fungus and plants and mushrooms, um, everything, all life on earth, not just animals but on this tree, we're all related. Where the tree comes down closer to the trunk, there are about 107 branches, and we call those branches classes. And day to day, we generally concern ourselves within the zoo with six of those classes of animals. Um, we look at uh, birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, fish, and then we group together some of the invertebrates to make the sixth class. So all, of, all animals on Earth belong to one of those classes, and today we're going to be looking at the similarities and differences with mammals. And as you've seen, it's a bit drizzly here today, so I don't know how much I can tempt them out, but we are with our marvellous mob of meerkats. And meerkats are a mammal, just like humans. Humans are a mammal too. So we belong on that same branch, that same classification as meerkats do. And one thing, um, uh, there's a few things that meerkats all have, mammals, sorry, all have in common. All mammals have fur or hair of some sort. So if you can think of as many mammals as you can, they've all got hair or fur of some sort on, on their body. Hopefully the meerkats will come out shortly. It's a bit drizzly for them, but I'm sure once they realize I've got more with mealworms, they'll, um, <laughs> they'll come out. So they all have hair or fur of some sort. So humans are mammals, and we've got hair all over our bodies, but mostly all of our hair, a lot of our hair is on top of our heads. And meerkat hair, hi, here's this. <laughs> Arthur, what's this? They're thinking about it. All, um, all, all mammals have fur of some sort over their body. The other thing that mammals have in common is that we're all warm-blooded. And what warm-blooded means is that we control the temperature of our blood, of, of our bodies, so the weather doesn't really affect it too much. There's extremity, so if it's too hot or too cold, that might affect it, but we can regulate the temperature of our bodies. Other animals, like some fish and reptiles, we call them cold-blooded because they can't regulate the temperature at all within, within themselves, so they use things like the sun to warm, to warm, themselves, to warm themselves up. The other thing that we all have in common is our large brains. Mammals have really complex brains, a large brain, especially compared to the body size of other animals, and that makes us really intelligent. So meerkats and humans are very, very, very smart, and one of the similarities between meerkats and humans is that we, can we use our brains to communicate, and that we've been joined by Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Hi. So just going back to some of the things we were talking about, you can see that the meerkats have fur all over their bodies, very, very similar to, to us because we've got hair all over our heads. But if you look really closely at your arms and legs, you'll see that we've got lots and lots of little hairs. And these hairs help to keep us warm. It also helps to, to regulate that body temperature um, and help us keep us nice and healthy. The other thing that mammals all have in common is that apart from a few exceptions, notably echidnas and platypus, we all have live young. That means when we have a baby, it's not an egg, it's alive straight away. 
and that's something that humans and meerkats as mammals both do. Then the next thing that we have in common with them is that when we look after those young, we normally stay with them for a long time and to help nourish them, to help feed them, we produce a milk. So there are a couple of other kinds of animals that produce milk, but notably mammals all produce milk for their live young. And there's a couple of other things that we have in common. As I mentioned, our large brain, but also our ears, the way we hear sound. Um, we've got three bones inside our ear that helps us translate sound and understand the world around us. And that all mammals have that in common. The last thing I'm going to note about what we all have in common is that all mammals are tetrapods. And what tetrapod means is four. Tetra means four. And pod means leg or foot. So all mammals have four legs. So that can be a bit confusing, especially when you think about animals like bats or humans um, that, or even whales and dolphins. So with whales and dolphins, they've evolved to the point where they no longer need their back legs and so that we can no longer see them anymore. They're no longer visible on the outside of their body. And instead of four legs, humans have two legs and we've evolved two arms. So we don't walk with our four legs anymore. We use them for other things. And then animals like bats have, um, have evolved wings. As we all know, bats are the only flying mammals and they use their four legs to fly with. So those are some of the similarities that all mammals have. So if you find an animal that is covered in hair, has live young, can produce milk, has four legs, um, and a large brain, so is quite clever and is warm-blooded, that animal is probably a mammal, and that's how we can class them together and that we know that we're related because we have all of those similarities. We've all diverged and evolved from those basic um, branches at the bottom into the species that we all are today. Then there are some of the differences, and I think, especially with me sat here with some of our meerkat, you can see some of the differences. So, although we're both tetrapods, we both have four legs, meerkats use all four of their legs to walk with, whereas when we're a little bit older and we're no longer crawling, we only use, what's the daisy? We only use two of our legs to walk with. Another difference, as I mentioned a little earlier, is the hair. We've got more hair than meerkats have, but meerkats is a little, a meerkat's hair is a little bit more noticeable. You can see it all over their bodies. With my, you can see a little bit of hair on my face and some, um, some hair on my head, but I don't have any hair around my eyes apart from my eyebrows and my eyelashes, whereas meerkats have hair all over their faces. And one of the interesting things about meerkats, where they're from, in Africa, in the savannah, the habitat where they live in. It's really sunny and bright, and they have dark faces, and specifically, they've got dark patches around their eyes, and that helps protect them from that bright sunshine. It absorbs some of those sun rays, which helps protect their eyes, a little bit like when we wear dark sunglasses to protect ourselves from the sun. Another difference that we have from the impact is they have a tail. Lots and lots of different animals have a tail, and lots and lots of different mammals have a tail. Humans used to have tails. We've got um, a bone called a coccyx at the bottom of our spine, um, which is the remnant of the tail that we used to have before we evolved from, from, from having one. But meerkats use their tail to balance, and they can use their tail to communicate. And when they stand up, oh, is someone gonna stand up? What's this? Don't eat out my pocket. <laughs> when they stand up, you can see just, they can use that tail as sort of like a third leg to help balance themselves. So there are lots of similarities and lots of differences between not only the different classes of animals, but also between the individual species inside that class. What I would like everyone at home to do is see if you can name five different species of mammal, five different species of bird, five different species of reptile, five different species of amphibian, five different species of invertebrates, and five different species of fish. Just And then, once you've got your list, see if you can point out the similarities between all of those species. Perhaps the species that you've chosen across all of the categories all have eyes, 
which is something we all have in common, and then trying to see if there's any differences. What what is difference between what are the differences between mammals and fish, and what are the difference between invertebrates and amphibians, and what are the difference what are the differences between birds and reptiles? See if you can see. Um, all the similarities and all the differences. If you'd like, I would love to see the species that you come up with in the different categories, so you can write them in the comments below. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. I'll see if I can answer some now. If not, I'll answer them all by tomorrow morning. I'll do it this evening and they'll all be answered by tomorrow morning. Um, hopefully we'll have some questions now. I'll just go over to Jim. Jim, do we have any questions at the moment? <laughs> Evangeline was asking, how do you tell the difference between the individual meerkats? Hello Evangeline. Well, when you meet a group of meerkats, they look really, really similar. But because I've been here for a very long time, and the meerkats have been here for about six years now, and I've worked with them every day over those six years, I start to see different differences between them. So they can be physical differences or they can be behavioural ones in the way that they act. So I can tell the difference, for example, this is Stephen, and I know this is Stephen because he's the biggest. Then next to me here, this is Arthur. I know the difference between Arthur because Arthur, if he will come up, are you going to come up? Arthur, hopefully you'll be able to see it. Arthur's got more of a yellow bum than the rest of the meerkat. So if you look at Stephen's bottom, there's a little bit of yellow, but it's quite brown. Whereas if I bring Arthur over backwards, hopefully you'll be able to see he's got more of a yellow bottom. Then we've got two other boys, Titch, who is the smallest, and Rex, who is the sweetest. So I can tell who those two are. And then our fifth meerkat is our only female, and she's called Chiku, and Chiku is in charge of the whole group. And you can always tell who Chiku is because she's the bravest and she's the smartest. She's the one that eats first, and she's the most curious, and she's also the bossiest. So I can tell how each of them are, either by how they look or how they behave. And that's mainly because I've spent so much time working with them. Super, that's a wonderful question. Uh, I like answering that question. Is there another? Uh, what are their long tails used for? They use their tails for lots and lots of different things. Um, sometimes they can signal danger with them and they can communicate um, with them. And they can also use them for balance. They can use them to, so they can see each other. And <clears throat> they, um, they can use them in um, defence. It can help protect parts of their, um, of their body. But the main reason, um, the main use of their tail um, is balance, especially during running or when they're standing. When they stand up, as I showed you earlier, when they stand up, they use, what's this? Is there too many on the bench? What's this? When they stand up, you can see they use the base of their tail to help balance, and that's really important for meerkats, even though they usually use the four legs to walk and run around with, when um, they have a behavior called sentry duty, which is they look for danger. So they get the, as tall as they possibly can and they help to look for danger and that tail helps um, helps with that balance. <laughs> I think they much prefer the dry inside. Yeah. <laughs> I think I do too. <laughs> and uh, Lily was asking, what is their main diet in the wild? Hello Lily. Um, that's, do you know what, that's a brilliant question because it also links back to what we were talking about earlier about the similarities, what's the same between all mammals. And one thing that I didn't mention before is that all mammals have very, very specialised teeth. There are lots of different kinds of animals like, um, like fish and, um, so for example, sharks that have amazing teeth. But mammals have really specialised teeth and quite often our teeth are very, very different. So our teeth um, are, is very much designed for an omnivore diet. And omnivore means we can eat lots of different things. So we can eat grains and seeds and vegetables and fruits and meat. And it's designed, uh, our teeth are designed that we can bite and we can tear, but we can also chew our food up and that helps digest our food so we can get as many nutrients as possible. Meerkats are also omnivores, but whereas humans' teeth and human diets sway closer to a more vegetarian diet, meerkats' teeth sway closer to a carnivore diet, which means meat-eating. 
So meerkats eat lots and lots of different things, but they've got much sharper teeth to help them eat meat um, than we do. At, here at Hamwell Zoo, we try to emulate as much of their wild diet as possible in the diet that they have here. So at the moment, they're getting mealworms, which is their favorite. And mealworms are the larvae, so the young, the young stage of a darkling beetle, a kind of insect. But they also eat chicken and they eat mice. Um, we feed them a very, very special pellet that is made just for meerkats that helps give them all the vitamins and minerals that they need to stay really, really healthy. We give them lots of clean, fresh water and they also enjoy lots and lots of vegetables and seeds. So they have a really, really wide, varied diet and they really enjoy their food too. <laughs> and Yavi is asking, what's the, uh, what's the point of those black marks around their eyes? Hello Yavi, that's a good question too. The, the black marks around their eyes have evolved to help protect their eyes from the sun. So one of the biggest dangers for meerkats in the wild are predators or other meerkats. So they need to be able to see far and wide to help protect their family. So as I mentioned earlier, they stand up on sentry duty. If I can get one to stand up, do I have a little look? Or at least let's see your eyes. Should we see your eyes? <laughs> So they stand up to help look for danger, and one problem where they're from um, in, in, South, um, in southern Africa, on the savannas, is that it's really, really bright, and sometimes when it's bright, it can make things difficult to see. So the dark patches around their eyes help absorb some of that light. If it was lighter, if it was um, a more like a white colour, it would reflect the light and that would make it more difficult for them to see. So those dark patches around a meerkat's eyes act like sunglasses and that helps them see, especially it helps them look for danger from predators or other meerkat groups. And it also helps them spot their food, especially um, in that bright, bright savannah sunshine. And uh, a couple of questions have been coming in as to um, where do they sleep and how do they sleep? Okay, so, um, so meerkats, um, we call a group of meerkats a mob, and they act as a really tight-knit family. And at the head of that mob is Chiku, who's on sentry duty at the moment. I've just heard some seagulls and some gulls flying over, and I think Chiku heard them too, so she's just what she wants to protect the rest of the family, and the other four are hidden underneath. <laughs> Once they realise it's safe, they'll all come back, they'll all come back out again. But in the wild, um, it's important to keep that family safe. So meerkats live in a burrow or a den underground. They've got really long, sharp claws which help them dig through the soil and sand of the savanna. And they dig themselves a system of holes and chambers underground and they'll all usually sleep together in one chamber. That keeps them warm because although where they live in the savanna is quite warm during the day, in the evenings it can be really quite cold. So that keeps them nice and warm and it keeps them nice and safe and together. Here in Hamwell Zoo, they've got an inside space which is kept really warm all year round so they feel nice and comfortable. And they also have a den. The den's not underground, but it is inside, so it's nice and protected and safe from any danger or predators. And inside that den, hopefully when we're open again, when, when you come to visit us, you'll see they've got a big den inside their inside space. But inside that den is all divisioned off, kind of like a house with different rooms. And those rooms, just like the chambers the wild meerkats live in underground, um, they're separated for different uses. So one area will be for sleeping, and another area um, within their den um, is called a latrine, which is basically a toilet. So the meerkats have a bathroom, and they have a couple of bedrooms, and then they also have what we might call a living room, where when they're awake but they want to be inside, that's where they'll spend their time exactly like we do. We have a bedroom to sleep in and we have a bathroom to go to for um, <laughs> to go poo and wee in <laughs> and we also have a living space when we're awake but we don't want to be outside and that protects us from danger and it protects us from the weather. So that they have that just like we do, they have a house with lots of different rooms. Usually it's underground. And I think the final one yeah. is a good one and it's um why do they have that leopard pattern on their on their coats. The leopard pattern 
they do have lots and lots of they they they, they have they certainly have a pattern on their coat and they have lots of different colour hairs which help blend them all into into one shape. Um, I think leopards usually have a more spotty pattern and I think everyone's not interested in the mealworms. But can we see this one down here? No, you can see one Hello? behind Should you. Come upside. Come up. Hi. Hi. If one comes up, I'll try and get them to um, put their back to you. Come up. And it's more stripy. So leopards normally have a more spotty coat and meerkats have a more stripy coat. And there's lots of different reasons and lots of different theories as to why they might have that. The most sensible theory and the theory that I think makes more sense and as with everything in science, it's not 100% um, certain and it's proven certain and we're not completely sure. Can we see this one? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see, so this is, uh, this is Chiku on sentry duty again, standing up looking for danger. And you can see she's got lots of stripes on her back. And the most, uh, what I feel is the most sensible reasoning behind why they might have them is it breaks up their silhouette. And it's a bit difficult in this space when you've got these beautiful bright murals painted all around them. But if you imagine where they're from in the savannah, where there's lots of sand and dead wood and sandy coloured rocks, just like the space we've created here for them, they can camouflage a little from predators. So that's why they're um, a very similar colour to their surroundings. So they can camouflage a little. But those lines, um, sort of slightly darker brown and lighter brown, they just help break up their silhouette and it makes, pre it, makes it more difficult for predators to pinpoint them and focus on them. So, um, and that's the, one of the main reasons we think why they have those stripes, but we're not 100% sure. So as Jim said, that is a really, really good, good question. Well done. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. As I mentioned earlier, I would love to hear um, what, um, what species of mammal, birds, reptiles, amphibians, insects and fish you can think of. And also, if you've got a bit of time, I would love to see um, the differences that you think they all have. See if you can see what's different about all those species, but also what's the same, what they all have in common, what's similar with all those, um, all those species. Do join us next Wednesday. Hopefully we'll have our technical problems sorted out. <laughs> join us next Wednesday where we'll be looking at another element of the curriculum. I hope everyone is enjoying learning from home. Stay home, stay safe, and from all of us at Hanwell Zoo, thank you so much for your support. We love you very, very much, and we will see you very soon. Bye-bye, everyone.